I'm Don Lemon, live in Sanford, Florida, and I'd like to welcome our viewers here in the United States and those now joining us from around the world on CNN International as we follow the breaking news story. George Zimmerman is a free man not guilty in the shooting death of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. And right now, CNN has an exclusive interview with George Zimmerman's brother, Robert Jr. The Zimmerman family has been a, it's been a living nightmare ever since Trayvon Martin's death in February of 2012. Let's go to CNN's Piers Morgan for that. Piers, take it away. Yeah, Don, thank you very much. I'm here with Robert Zimmerman. Uh, we're live. You've just heard the verdict within the last hour. I've interviewed you six or seven times in the last year, but always in very tense circumstances. I'm now interviewing you when you know your brother is a free man. How does that feel? I, I, I really can't put into words uh, how relieved we are as a family. That's the first thing my father said. Having said that, I don't uh, think this is a time for high-fiving. I acknowledge, we all have acknowledged, uh, that Mr. Martin Trayvon Martin lost his life. Uh, it was not an act of murder. It was not an act of manslaughter. The jury has spoken. Our judicial system has spoken. Uh, but that does not diminish the tragedy. Death is tragic in any circumstance of someone, a young person, losing their life for, any, for whatever circumstances exist. I know you've just spoken literally in the last moments uh, to your sister, Gracie, who has spoken directly to George after the verdict. How did she describe his mood? He is still processing the uh, reality or notion of being a free man, of having uh, what the judge described as no further business before the court. As you know, he's had an uh, ankle monitor on him, a GPS monitor monitoring his uh, every step, his whereabouts, and his curfew. None of those things exist anymore. So I think, you know, he has, um, he has some decompression to do, some decompressing, and he has to align himself with himself again as as the free George. What, was he emotional? Did Gracie describe how, how he was on the phone? Um, she didn't. Uh, our family was. Um, George is just now getting around to processing. I think as m most of our family is just now getting to process the reality that we're not on the other end of this mountain of misinformation, that now the jury has spoken and that now we are uh, exonerated as a family. But more importantly, George is exonerated as a defendant. Um, and we are going to process that. It takes time. You know, we've been on the other end of this for the better part of a year and a half now, and it's going to take us some time to heal. What would he do? I mean, he's a free man. He, he's come out tonight into a world where many people despise him. You know that. Uh, they'll continue to because of this result. It's an incredibly polarizing case. Does he fear for his safety? Does he have concerns about the quality of the life? For the rest of his life? He has always feared for his safety. We have always feared for his safety and our safety as a family. Um, clearly, you know, he's a free man in the eyes of the court, but he's going to be looking uh, around his shoulder for the rest of his life. There are factions, there are groups, there are people that would want to take the law into their own hands as they perceive it or, you know, be vigilantes in some sense that they think that justice was not served. They won't respect a verdict no matter how uh, it was reached, and they will uh, always present a threat to George and to his family. Let me replay for you the moment that your brother heard that he was a free man. In the circuit court of the 18th Judicial Circuit in and for Seminole County, Florida, State of Florida versus George Zimmerman, verdict, we the jury find George Zimmerman not guilty. So say we all four person. Does either side want to pull the jury? We would, Your Honor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as, I mean ladies, I'm sorry, as your juror number is being called, please answer whether this is your verdict. Juror B-29, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror B-76, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror B-37, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror B-51, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror E-6, is this your verdict? Yes. Juror E-40, is this your verdict? Yes. Thank you. He was extraordinarily calm, uh, George, on hearing that. Let me ask you the, the difficult questions here. Sure. Many people have reacted with fury tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, Many people have acted uh, thinking this is the right decision, but many have said it's an atrocity, it's an outrage. Nobody has been made accountable for the death of Trayvon Martin. What do you say to those people? You know, I think that we don't make people accountable sim for death, you know, as it were, because there is a death. Death is unfortunate. Uh, death is a, uh, a, 
a byproduct of, as the law ascribes, you know, returning force with appropriate force, the jury found that he acted appropriately in defending his life in accordance with the law. Um, I would say to them that we're a country of laws, we respect the rule of law, and that respecting this verdict as we called for before the verdict was in uh, is the only appropriate thing to do as Americans. This is our system, this is what we have, it's the best in the world. And I think that conjecture and speculation and emotional reaction to what people think may or may not have happened has been dominating the conversation for a long time now. But, you know, people called for an arrest. They called for his day in court. They have had their arrest. They have had their day in court. They have seen blood. They have seen what Trayvon Martin did to my brother. And it's time, it's high time that they accept uh, that the jury and system that we have in this country is a system that we should respect. But they've also seen, of course, what your brother did to Trayvon Martin. And many people feel, you know, why did your brother pursue him? Why did he get out of the vehicle and pursue him? Why did he carry a gun? Why is he not in himself mm -hmm. feeling any sense of responsibility for what happened? Because oh, without yeah. those two things, sure. Trayvon Martin would probably still be alive. I don't alive. think it's true that he doesn't feel responsibility. George was completely sorrowful after this happened. And, and just because he's calm or because he's not uh, over the top, you know, emotional doesn't mean he doesn't feel uh, terribly about it. As we saw in court when he asked uh, Dora Singleton, are you Catholic? Yes, because in my religion it's bad no matter what when someone loses life, abortion, mm -hmm. uh, self-defense, what have you. Um, but I would tell those people that they are, again, from my previous answer, they're not paying attention to facts. You said pursued, which is a very key word, which comes from Benjamin Crump. He admitted to following that came out in court. The state of Florida never proved that he continued to follow. So any reference to George following Trayvon Martin, catching up to confronting him, is simply conjecture to uh, format a narrative's... But the, the truth, though, isn't it, Robert, is that we don't know. I mean, no, there we too, do know. There were too many unanswered no, questions. This, well, you know country, what your brother told you. No, no, no. In this country, we mm. know when there's a verdict. In your country, we may not know, and we may be subject to continual speculation till the end of time. No, no, no. I, I totally respect the judicial system, and I respect the re verdict of any jury mm -hmm. under that. I think that's the only way you can respond to these things. Uh, but you know my view about this from the start. But I do respect the, the jury here. I, I would just ask you this, I guess. If the situation was reversed, mm -hmm. if you were the brother of Trayvon Martin, and, or let's say you were the brother of George Zimmerman, and he'd been killed by Trayvon Martin in the same situation reversed. Right. The Trayvon had got out of a vehicle, had a gun, been a neighborhood patrolman, and had got involved in some altercation, pulled the gun out, and had killed your brother dead. Mm -hmm. What the jury found how, is... How, how would you feel on a human level and an emotional level about that? Well, two things, obviously. You know, that is tragic. You know, and, but if Trayvon were my brother and he was the one who was armed and legally armed and, uh, you know, able to carry that firearm in a legal way, and my brother uh, blindsided him by breaking his nose and pummeling his head into concrete and continuing to punch him, I would find, and the jury has found, that uh, unfortunately uh, he had the, the greater hand in his own demise, which was causing, by his own hand, his death. That's unfortunate, but that's the reality. And do you that's really what believe the, that, Robert? That's, that's what the jury believes. It doesn't do, matter what I believe. Do you believe that? Absolutely, I do believe that. I, I know. You believe that Trayvon caused I believe, his own death? I believe. 17 year old boy just. The jury believes. Just with a bag of Skittles? Look, we can be cynical about it till the end of time. No, I must ask you what your personal view is. And I've been very clear what my personal view is, and I think so has the jury. The jury has spoken, and they've been very clear. Self-defense means you were defending your life from a real perceived threat. Whether or not you were injured to the degree that some would have you be injured to in order to shoot someone or not, you actually perceived an imminent threat of grave bodily harm or death. And that is what the circumstances were that surrounded George in the moment he fired his pistol. That's the law in this country. The jury's been very clear. They agree with George. It is unfortunate that someone lost their life. But having said that, mm -hmm. you asked me if this, the, the role were reversed. Yeah. I, would, I don't begrudge anyone for trying to get to answers as to why their son died. Mm -hmm. I just, what I do take issue with is when those answers are not immediately forthcoming, throwing the race card on the table and accusing everyone from George, the Sanford Police Department, the Chief of Police, Bill Lee, the state attorney's office in the 18th circuit, everyone in between of being racist or sweeping a murder under well, the rug. Well, Mark Emeritonite said that if 
George Zimmerman had been black, he would never have been charged with any offense. Perhaps not because that happens in Chicago every day. You know, there are many people who go out and, and shoot other people who are black, and they shoot other people who are black, and they are not charged they, for whatever reason. Um, well, some of them are, obviously. Some of them are. There are many more who are not. There are many more unsolved homicides in Chicago than there are in Sanford, Florida. Um, but, you know, we are where we are as a family, and George is where he is as George. And we're going to have the right conversation that we need to have going forward. You know, un Trayvon is the victim of many things. He's certainly not, and the jury has found that he is not. Our system has found that he is not. He is not the victim of a murder. He is not the victim of a manslaughter. And as much as you want to spin it or talk about Skittles mm -hmm. or trash George on your program or any other CNN program, he is an innocent man. He it's, did it's not actually, It's not law. about trashing him. It's not about trashing him. It's just, it turned out to be a fact after George pulled that trigger and killed Trayvon Martin, that Trayvon had been unarmed and just had a, had a bag of skittles. No, he was armed with a sidewalk, he was armed with his nose-breaking fist, mm -hmm. and he was armed with whatever aggression he brought to that moment. You okay. know, what let's, bag let's, of skittles let's, let's or bag of M&Ms or bag of whatever you want. Let's hold this thing and just have a short break. We'll come back, we'll talk more about this. I want to get you, what you want to say to Trayvon Martin's family. They both made statements, his parents tonight. And also what life will be like for George. He's put on lots of weight, obviously been under deep stress. He's got this moment of freedom how you and the family intend to help him celebrate that moment. Mr. Zimmerman, you're, uh, I have signed the um, judgment that um, confirms the jury's verdict. Your bond will be released. Your GPS monitor will be cut off when you exit um, the courtroom over here. And uh, you have no further business with... Back now with Robert Zimmerman, whose brother George was acquitted sensationally tonight uh, of the murder or manslaughter of Trayvon Martin. Do you see your brother as innocent after uh, this? I do. Or simply not guilty of murder and manslaughter? No, I do. I think that that kind of connotation suggests some kind of accident or some kind of unforeseen uh, circumstance where, uh, unfortunately, a death occurred. Like, if you got in a fight and punched me and I had a pacemaker and I died, I think that what uh, is different in this situation is that the self-defense, uh, not only the instruction to the jury, but the notion and the right that we have in this country to defend oneself uh, speaks right to the face of innocence. It speaks boldly and makes uh, and enunciates innocence very clearly. You have the right to defend yourself when someone is beating you the way that Trayvon beat George uh, or did, anyone beat someone Did Trayvon Martin else. not have the right to defend himself? From what, Pierce? Trayvon Martin had the right to go home. You know, unfortunately, and I, I don't want to retry this case here tonight. It's been tried. Yeah, fair My enough. My brother is innocent. Mm. He acted in self-defense, and that is what our jury and our criminal justice system has found. There's a statement from uh, Tracy Martin, Trayvon's father. God bless me and Sabrina with Trey. Even in his death, I know my baby proud of the fight. We all, along with all of you, put up for him. God bless. Thanks to everyone who are with us. We together can make sure this doesn't happen again. Obviously, very... Uh, upset, very emotional, you'd expect them to be like that. What is your message to Trayvon's family tonight? I, I should be very careful with that. I've been very clear about my message before. I, I expressed our condolences as a family last year. Um, and I think it would be uh, remiss of me not to say I understand tonight, um, I understand their pain and there are no winners. They will not win or lose uh, anything more than they already have lost, which is their son's life by any kind of verdict uh, for George. Um, I applaud them for asking for the verdict to be respected. It's the same thing our family did. Um, I would ask them to reflect quietly as a family, which we will do, um, and to pray, and I will pray for them. I mentioned as we came to the break that you know, George has got his freedom. He's been through hell. Mm -hmm. Let's put ourselves in the Zimmerman family mindset for now. It must be a moment of celebration, although not, as you said, you know, flag-waving celebration, but a moment of great relief for the family. How do you think you will, as a family, celebrate? Let's use that phrase. That's what it is for you and your family, George's acquittal and his freedom. You know, I don't think we're really there yet. I think that what was very clear to the Sanford Police Department, to all the men and women of honor who honored their oath, and to the state attorney's office, and all their employees who honored their oath and assistant state attorneys, there was no crime committed here because it was self-defense. So I think we're kind of taken back to that moment. And because we have been through this hell, this virtual non-existence or evaporating from, from the uh, public eye, uh, 
except with uh, exchanges like this, um, we kind of have to uh, get there. We're not we're not to celebrating, and I don't think that we'll we'll ever have a day that people might imagine is, is some kind of uh, celebration. And that's mm -hmm. the word you're using because we're always going to be concerned about our safety and Georgia's safety in terms of vigilantes or you know there's threats all the time directed at George, directed at myself, directed he at was, our family. He was handed back his gun as part of the process of being released. Will he keep it? I don't have confirmation from him. I don't see any reason why he shouldn't. You, think, it, you think he'd be... I think he has more reason now than ever to think that people are trying to kill him because they express they're trying to kill him all the time every day. On my Twitter feed, on the internet, someone was just arrested today uh, in Florida for saying they were going to, you know, go on some shooting spree uh, if George Zimmerman got free. There's people outside. I've seen the threats to, to you Black and your family. Black Panthers yeah. calling for his death right there in front of the courthouse. Mm -hmm. There's a person wearing a shirt with George's face on it with crosshairs through it, mm -hmm. and it's just tossed off his freedom of expression. You know, so he has reason now more than ever to think that people would, if they could, try to kill him. He's been demonized. He's been turned into a monster in many ways in the build-up to this trial, but he has been found not guilty. He is an innocent man. Do you think it's time that the demonization stopped in relation to your brother? Or do you accept, perhaps, as a family, does, does George accept, that the fact that his actions led to the death of a young teenage boy who turned out to be unarmed, that that in itself means that it, it can never be an easy ride for him? Well, I don't think George accepts, nor does his family, that his actions led to the death, nor does the jury, nor does the criminal justice system. The action that led to Trayvon Martin's death was deciding to either lay in wait or return to attack George viciously, continuously, relentlessly, despite George's cries for help, which is a sign that he's giving up, and uh, ultimately threaten to kill him and attempt to disarm him. But and that, do, is, you, that is the finding of the verdict. That. I understand that. I, that I understand is a, you that. asked the question. I'm trying to answer it. I understand you that. You said, did George's actions lead to Trayvon Martin's mm -hmm. death? No, they in fact did not. And continuing to repeat that is irresponsible. We have a verdict. It's mm -hmm. time to respect it, not just on CNN's air, but throughout this country. Right. I, I respect that. I suppose what I would say is, though, that he was responsible for pulling the trigger that shot dead Trayvon Martin, mm -hmm. who was a 17-year-old unarmed boy. It could have been a 45-year-old armed-to-the-teeth woman. It doesn't matter. But it happened the, to be an unarmed teenager. It, it happened to be so, an assailant. So here's my question, really, is, is that with that, what kind of sense of responsibility do you think George has about that, the fact I, that he did kill a boy? Oh, he has. He, I've, I've said that, Pierce. I've said that on your show. I've said that. Uh, on many shows. George was never the same after that. You know from watching or from hearing reports of the court uh, proceedings that he had moral qualms. He didn't know that Trayvon Martin had died until he was told. Mm. Uh, in his religious uh, beliefs, death by any definition is a tragedy. Mm. So he has moral things that he's going to have to deal with and emotional and psychological hurdles he's going to have to overcome. They are not legal hurdles. And they are not to be equated with him taking responsibility that his actions somehow led to Trayvon Martin's death, mm. because they did not. And that is the finding of the court, and it's time to respect it. You've been somebody that I've admired hugely as a brother, giving support to his brother. Every time I've interviewed you, we've had quite robust exchanges, as we have tonight, but you've never reacted badly to that. You've accepted that it's been a very contentious case from the start. How do you feel on a personal human level to what's happened tonight after all the stress, the strain that's built up <clears throat> over the last year or so? I, um, how do I feel on a personal level? I think I have uh, learned to kind of insulate myself to have very thick skin to exchanges or to being, George will speak for himself one day, but until he could or until he's able to, I spoke for my family. And I think I've had to, uh, as much as I've tried to help my family make sense out of this, I've had to rely on them mm -hmm. uh, to make sense out of all of this for all of their children, our parents, Robert and Gladys. And I think that we need some time to take a step back. I'd like to start engaging the world again in some kind of meaningful sense. And I feel terribly for George because I don't think he's going to have that opportunity uh, for a very long time. I, I do want to thank the people who place their trust in George, who place their trust in the Sanford police, who place their trust in the criminal justice system, and who place their trust in, in 
what they were hearing, what they were hearing was the truth, even when no one would believe us, even when everyone would stand against us or rebut us with conjecture or talk about Skittles or whatever. The truth is, the jury has found my brother is an innocent man. He committed no crime. He should have never been charged for this or any other crime whatsoever. And we have to really take a step back now and kind of rebuild as a family. Our identity won't be the same, and I think that's kind of what you're asking. There's mm -hmm. no semblance or there's, there's no uh, illusion that we're going to go back to something. We go onward and forward from this point as a family. Robert Zuman, I do appreciate you coming in uh, for this interview. It's not been an easy time for you and your family. I totally understand that, and I respect that. And your brother has today, by a jury in an American court, been found not guilty of murder and manslaughter. And that will be a huge relief to you and to your family. So thank you very much. Thank you, Piers. Robert Zimmerman, back to you, Dom. Hey, Piers. You there? Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I know, I know this is your interview, I, and I don't want to step on it. If you say no, I, I'd like to ask Robert a, a question, if, if yeah. that's possible. Is that okay? Sure, of course. Robert, you know, you said you want to start some sort of dialogue, and, you know, much has been made about race in this particular case. And you, your brother, your family, you have a unique opportunity in this country to address that. What would you like to see happen when it comes to um, the race, healing the divide, and do you plan to do anything about that? And will you ask your brother to do anything about that? Uh, I, I will ask George first to heal, and I will see to it that my life's work is bringing people together and not driving people apart. I know that for the better part of a year and a half, uh, we've been on the receiving end of a lot of attacks, and I think that now that the jury has spoken, like Pierce said, in, in, in an American uh, justice system, uh, we have to grow from this. Um, I want to know what makes people angry enough to attack someone the way that Trayvon Martin did. I want to know uh, if it is true, and I don't know if it's true, that Trayvon Martin was looking to procure firearms, was growing dr marijuana plants, or was making lean, or, or whatever he was doing. I want to know that every minor high schooler uh, that would be reaching out in some way for help, and they may feel it's by procuring firearms or whatever they may be doing, that they have some kind of help. I think that that's what George was trying to do when he mentored two black children. Um, even when funding from the county was withdrawn, he, he and his wife continued to break that cycle of, uh, uh, you know, uh, misfortune. Th these children's father is serving a life sentence in prison. I don't think a lot of people know that about George, and I think that the only way he saw to break that cycle was through service. And service means personal devotion and personal dedication. I wonder how many of these people at rallies calling for George's death, calling for his uh, capture dead or alive, I wonder how many of them mentored African-American children. I think that it's, it's a time now that going forward that we should start to ask really tough questions about why it was so hard for us to conceive the, uh, the likelihood that, you know, perhaps Trayvon Martin yeah. really did attack George this way. And, and ask tough questions about are we not willing to accept that because of race now we've been the product of a bicultural love story in our life and we've wrapped our arms around every race uh, since we were growing up because the only people around us and, who and were anything like us robert, were black people robert thank yes, you Tom. i have to go the computer's going to cut off off we have to we have to get to okay. a break i'm so sorry but i thank you for answering that question and pierce thank you for letting me get asked that final question i really appreciate it our coverage is going to continue here in 60 seconds on cnn